Hello, welcome down onto the tech desk and something a bit different today as I look at this, the new V10 wheel from PXN. Now, why is this different? Well, simply put, this thing is too big to fit on the tech desk, so I've come away and onto the games room to show it off. So I've already looked at the V9 and the V900 wheels on the channel before, and they're both okay in their own rights, but this, from the same company, is a step up with a few caveats. VXN have finally added a wheel to their lineup, which is a serious competitor to the Logitechs of this world. But at over £300, though, it is a hard sell, as it is relatively expensive for a company that frankly made budget wheels before today. So the box it comes in is large and heavy, with the entire thing weighing in at just under 10 kilograms. Inside, it's very well packaged and consists of the wheel, a bunch of cables, wheel clamps, more cables, instructions, gear shifter, wheel module and pedals. Once out, fitting it all together isn't particularly hard, and I've actually managed to do this without the need to look at the instructions. It's all pretty self-explanatory. It's PC, Xbox, and PS4 compatible. I did try this on the PS5 with no luck as yet, but maybe that will come in a future update. As for connecting and working it, I had to do nothing but plug it into an Xbox. Plug in an Xbox paired controller, and it all worked. Nothing else was needed. So let's start with the wheel itself. It feels a good weight and all the buttons are nicely placed and have a good feel to them. If I did have to have one complaint, it's that it's a bit on the small side. It's only 27 centimeters wide and 25 centimeters tall. It is covered in a felt, which again, it feels nice and premium, but I can 100% imagine this wearing after a few months of sweaty hands turning it. In the center of the controller face buttons, including L3 and R3, on the rear are some great metallic paddles. The top two are out of the box L1 and R1 and have a very satisfying click to them. The smaller paddles underneath are L2 and R2 and more of analog upon pressing and with a good amount of travel. Now onto the wheel module. And can I say first though, the eagle-eyed among you may recognize this. It is extremely similar to the Mad Cat's Pro Racing wheel. And though I can't be 100% sure, I would put money on it being a repurposed product. So this part of the V10 is where all the weight comes in. Due to what's inside, it's very heavy. You connect the wheel to it by simply placing the wheel onto it and screwing the large part tight. Once turned on, it does a startup routine where the force feedback kicks in, which takes only a few seconds. The whole module is clamped onto the disc. And it's great that it has a metal plate, but it's sad to see that the clamps are still just rigid plastic. They do a good enough job, but for the price, a metal clamp would have gone a long way to add in more value. On the rear of the module are all the ports for the components and a switch to switch between 270 and 900 degrees motion. Next onto the gear shifter. This is good and a bad, really. The good is above the desk, the bad is under the desk. So the stick itself feels premium and it works well. I've no problems hitting my gears one through six and to activate reverse, you just push down. It's all good. The problem I have is underneath. The clamp, for starters, is plastic. As with the module, some nice metallic clamps would have been much more preferable. So next up is the pedals. I really enjoy using these pedals, though they are mostly metal. They look cool and have good adjustability. But it's in the adjustability that again feels a little bit cheap. To adjust them, you tighten or loosen the large plastic bolt at the bottom. This then gives the pedals somewhat of a harder or looser feeling when pressed. You can also adjust the angle of the pedals by undoing the screws on the side of each pedal. The plates are made of all metal, and although heel rest appears to be metal, I believe it to be just coated. Underneath the foot plate is five large rubber pads to help it keep it secure on the carpet or flooring. I've had zero issues with the movement. I find it to be very secure when using it on carpet. To the rear is a port to connect to the wheel and a USB port. Overall, these feel great, and using them is a definite step up for all the plastic pedals that I've used in the past. There's also a free app that you can download, which has a plethora of functions. What you do is just turn your wheel on, fire up the app and connect it to your V10. This app is great and it has a lot of functionality. But firstly, what you want to do is check the firmware to see if you're up to date, but you will need a PC to update it. Then next up, you can map all the buttons to your preferred setup if you like, or just download one of the presets that come with the app. The main thing I use this app for was to check the functionality of the wheel, the stick and the pedals in real time. Just click the top right icon and then hit testing and it's here where you can test everything in real time so you can have exactly how you want it. All I ever really did was just ensure that my pedals were as accurate as it can be as I like to race with very little dead zone. All in all, this app is a really nice addition. So once you've got it all out and connected, I jumped into Forza and it ran perfectly, all working without a hitch. The force feedback is excellent, it gives a decent feeling. 
Driving with the wheel was far more enjoyable due to the force feedback and it never missed a beat with the precise controls and pressure in appropriate places. Turning was smooth and depending on the game there was no difference really between the 900 and the feeling of 270 degree motion. I played a lot of Forza using this wheel as I wanted to test most rugged and different situations and different turns to give it a proper test and it performed very well. It felt very accurate and was a huge leap in terms of immersion from say the V9. If you're looking to take your racing seriously then you'll be looking at a wheel two maybe three times as much. This wheel is definitely aimed at the consumer market so games like Forza are probably its limit. If you have a decent rig then this isn't for you so you need to be going for a much higher spec wheel. So overall it's a great force feedback wheel in the same price range as many others with the same features. My only issues are slightly small felt wheel and cheap feeling plastic clamps. As I said at the beginning it's nice to see another company join the party in higher than budget wheels to compete alongside Thrustmaster and Logitech but being relatively new to the game and with that price tag I believe they need to shift these out and get word out and maybe just add some metal clamps. That's your lot then. What are your thoughts on this the new V10 wheel from PXN as a consumer wheel? Do let me know down in the comments below. Please do like and subscribe. And until the next video, bye bye.